Oh, thank you. All right, so uh, I'm gonna talk a little bit about uh, collaboration uh, in all the years that this uh, fellows course has been given. It's always been given in a, a collaborative um, uh, milieu. Uh, each of us contributing uh, what we can uh, for the care, uh, spine care of uh, our communities. And each of us have different uh, realms and domains, but we all have the same common concerns. And uh, there, there presently is a bit of a, a kerfluffle uh, about the, um, uh, the uh, surgeon and non-surgeon uh, territories. And earlier uh, today we were looking at disc therapies and access to disc uh, because that's an, uh, uh, it's a territory where there is a shared interest uh, and uh, mutual collaboration. Uh, there has been a position paper put out by surgical societies. This is a list of surgical societies, uh, whether they be neurosurgical, combined neurosurgery, and orthopedic, uh, or um, orthopedic alone. Uh, and But what's common in all these societies, they're surgical societies. And what was common in uh, uh, Dr. Nadeau's earlier presentation is they were non-surgical pain societies. And each of them have um, domains of influence, uh, which can be re-termed uh, turf. Uh, and a position paper came out uh, not long ago uh, with regard to the evolving innovative technologies in care of the spine being provided by non-surgeons. And so the position paper was about uh, uh, doing a fusion procedure of the spine in, uh, for, by individuals who were not in these societies. Uh, and that raised a bit of, um, that raised a bit of concern. So, the position paper can be summarized as uh, folks with a, a great deal of experience in particular arenas uh, saying, not in my backyard. And if you've ever experienced uh, that not in my backyard philosophy in the community, you know it's around self-interest, self-interest, self-interest. And so what I did is, uh, rather than ask you to read that it just says only ortho, only neurosurge, only ortho, only neurosurge, uh, these statements are self-interest statements, and one of them is particularly true. Uh, it's the potential for managing complications that require interventional management in an open manner with a knife. And so that statement is particularly true, but it is a navigable uh, statement. If you distill these down into simpler condensations, it's only ortho and neurosurgery have street cred, whether it's in biology or biomechanics or anatomy or, uh, or devices. And you've seen by the discussions here this morning that the people at the podium have street cred in all of these arenas. So that statement on its face is challengeable. Uh, that only ortho neurosurgery can handle the complications, that on its face is impactfully important. So if you're going to be in this arena, you need someone who's got your back and that's community relationship. You need to have relationships in your community where you've got somebody else's back and they've got your back. So if you have a spine surgeon whose patients are failing uh, surgical uh, fusion uh, treatments or have uh, compression fractures above or below constructs, and it would be a huge commitment to deal with those fractures in an open manner and extending the construct, you've got their back. You can deliver interventional means to stabilize that problem. And that physician can, in turn, uh, have your back if something comes up and it needs to be managed open and it needs to be managed now. So this is community relationships. That's what this is. And when you go into practice, you want to establish community relationships as one of the first things you do. Introduce yourself, 
Look for people who are leaders in your community. Align and uh, uh, partner with them in a manner that takes care of the community. When you look at the unique um, training uh, that uh, this uh, uh, select group, it's true our trainings are different, but it's also true, and, and uh, I, I appreciate Ramo saying that this morning, uh, and Doug the same in previous presentations, none of us do what we were trained. That technology is way back in the rear view mirror. And we've gone through three or four technology evolutions which had not been imagined during our training. And the same thing's gonna happen for you. And in fact, the reason you attend courses like this is to stay abreast of the leading edge so that you can move into innovation as innovation is proven to be S-A-F-E. The rest of this down here is on its face, challengeable. Uh, uh, quality safety education uh, interventions are not exclusively anybody's territory. They are the responsibility of physicians like ourselves and yourselves to provide this for the community and do it in a manner that uh, has limited complications and great efficacy and is cost sensitive, as Ramo said, SAFE. Uh, so when you look at the National Society position papers, you can see that they're advocating for a status quo uh, and it is against the tide of innovation that that kind of stance um, is, is going to be eroded. Uh, so if you have uh, noticed that in that list there were no multidisciplinary societies, NAS was not on that list. Pain was not on that list. There were no multi, they were just surgical societies. So although your brethren, your surgical brethren, have a particular point of view in your communities, just be sensitive to develop relationships that protect your patients from adverse complications, which you might not be able to deal with, but you have that person on speed dial. Uh, so that the community doesn't suffer the complication. It gets managed promptly and effectively by a colleague who's got your back. So when you look at what are successful collaborative relationships, well, a national society has successfully navigated uh, these competing interests for decades. Uh, the uh, world's largest vertebral compression, percutaneous vertebral augmentation, vertebral compression fracture registry was populated by both surgeon and non-surgeons taking care of common spine problems without an issue of territoriality. Similarly, uh, fractures in the pelvis are managed by both surgeon and non-surgeon. And that's what I want to conclude with, is collaboration is around relationships that sustain both your practice and your community. Any questions? I think that, Neil, that was extremely well. And we wrestled with this ourselves. Oh, yeah, well. oh, yeah. Dan and I have and Neil, danced this dance. The intervention, I appreciate the strength of the day again. But do you think it's part of uh, the mentality of these societies that the people that populate those committees tend to be status quo types? And, that, and are they looking back and say the cardiovascular world? Uh, so Dan's commenting, uh, how long does it take to learn lessons? <laughs> exactly. So. You know, you guys are probably too young to know that at the, in the cardiovascular world, the cardiac surgeon, cardiothoracic surgeons were at the top of the heap, right, when it came to, because they did cabbages, they did bypasses. And then this thing called um, cardiac catheterization came along. And pretty soon, they, the cardiac surgeons end up being pretty much the handmaidens of the cardiologists, because they could do stents. And they could do, they could do balloon, balloon angioplasties and then stents, and now... You know, they only need cardiac thoracic, cardiothoracic surgeons for really tough cases or 
Or so, when the balloon tears through and right. uh, and you're and you actively bleeding, yeah, you're actively they, bleeding into the, the pericardium, and it's time to it's time to go. Right. So that and that is a classic example of a collaborative relationship that originally evolved out of NIMBY. Right. And so any cardiologist knows he has to have a cardiothoracic surgeon on standby, essentially. And I don't know. I don't. I don't know the mentality of these people on these committees. If they see that as a cautionary tale to their own specialty, I. I don't know if you. You might be able to comment more on that than I. Yeah. Yeah. So um, uh, I'm going to take a different perspective. Human nature doesn't really change uh, rapidly. Uh, you know, uh, anyone versed in uh, religious. Um, in, in theology or uh, religious literature knows that the fundamental flaws of Adam and Eve are still present in yourself. You know, you see something that's beautiful, it looks good to you, and you take it, uh, even though you're told, don't take it. And so we have this same sort of um, mentality, but consistently, collaboration changes behavior. So when you learn to think of uh, someone else's interests as important, like yours, you know, whatever your brother is telling you, whatever your sister is saying, has the same uh, value as what you are thinking and saying to yourself, then you, you, can, you can come about the change. And the thing that's great about the registry stuff is it's massive numbers from huge swaths of practitioners who see remarkably different people all the time, and the numbers don't lie. So it changes your way of, and if your outcomes don't match someone else's, you find out really quick, who is that someone else? And can I call her and ask her, how is it you do what you do that's different than how I do it? And boom. So uh, being open and collaborative is hugely impactful whether you're in a small community or you're in an academic center. It's a, it's a way of, of being. Any other questions? All right, we'll tee up the next lab.